Now this is a difficult integral. Let's see how we could solve it. To solve this integral, we're going to use complex analysis. So to begin, we're going to analyze the poles of our integrand and then set up a contour. Quickly solving for the x values that make the denominator 0, we get that we have poles at x equals e to the pi i over 3, negative 1, and e to the 5 pi i over 3, or e to the negative pi i over 3. And because of this third power, each of these poles is of order 3, which will come into play later. Based on these poles, we're going to use a contour that only contains this first pole at e to the pi i over 3. So our contour has three parts. One that goes from 0 to r, where r is bigger than 1, so that this pole is contained in the contour. Part 2, this arc that traces out a circle and goes out to an angle of 2 pi over r radians. And then finally, part 3 goes back to the origin along this line at an angle of 2 pi over 3. And now we'll integrate our function on this contour. We see that integrating along the whole contour would be the same as integrating over each part. On the first part, it's very simple. We'll just go from 0 to r. On the second part, we're actually taking z equal to fixing the radius r and we're changing the angle, which means that dz equals ri e to the i theta, d theta. So now we're integrating over theta. We're going from 0 to 2 pi over 3. And finally, on this last part, we see that the radius changes, but the angle is fixed. So we'll have z equals r e to the 2 pi i over 3. And so dz equals e to the 2 pi i over 3 dr. And this time, we're going from big R to 0. Now we could swap these two bounds and multiply by a negative, and we'll see that this term is very similar to this term, this one just having an extra factor of minus e to the 2 pi i over 3. So we can combine those together to get 1 minus e to the 2 pi i over 3 times the integral from 0 to r of this integrand. And now we're left with this integral. Now this integral is particularly hard to work with, but we're going to show that as r goes to infinity, this integral actually goes to 0. And we'll see as r goes to infinity, this is the desired integral. So to get that, let's look at the absolute value of this integral. By the properties of the absolute value, we could bring it inside the integral. And we have the absolute value of i times e to the i theta is just 1, so that'll go away. And we'll just be left with an r up top. Absolute value of r, but r is positive. By the reverse triangle inequality, we get that the absolute value of r cubed times e to the 3i theta plus 1 is greater than or equal to the absolute value of r cubed minus 1. And so this fraction will be less than or equal to because the denominator got smaller. And here, there's no theta dependence. So we can pull out this fraction, and we'll just integrate theta from 0 to 2 pi over 3, which is just a factor of 2 pi over 3. And finally, we note that as r approaches infinity, this fraction will approach 0. So we'll see if we take a limit as r approaches infinity up here, we'll get that this goes to infinity, and then this goes to 0. So now we've come to the other side of the board to compute the value of the contour integral. We'll combine our result from the last board with this result to get the value of the integral that we desire. So we're going to use Cauchy's residue theorem, which tells us that the value of an integral over its contour is equal to 2 pi i times the sum of all the residues of the poles contained inside the contour, which in this case we only have one pole. But it is of order 3, so the residue calculation is going to be quite cumbersome. So this is the formula for a residue of a pole of order 3. So the most difficult part is going to be computing the second derivative. I'll go through that calculation right now. I computed the second derivative of this function, and now all I have to do is plug in e to the pi i over 3. And after plugging in the limit and simplifying, we get that this contour integral is equal to pi i times 10 over 27 times e to the minus 2 pi i over 3. So now we'll take it back over here and equate the integral as the contour goes out to infinity. We'll note that the contour work that we just did still applies here since there's only this one pole still contained even as r goes out to infinity. Dividing through by 1 minus e to the 2 pi i over 3, we see that from the bottom if we factor on i to root 3, we actually get that these two parts cancel and the i's cancel. So we're left with... 10 pi over 27 root 3, which also happens to be 0.67 to two decimal places. And there we have it.